Well, the GOP's new emphasis on being explicitly homophobic once again has triggered a sort of race to the bottom, predictably so, where right-wing politicians and right-wing grifters like Tulsi Gabbard are trying to out-homophobe her peers on the right in order to, I guess, pander most effectively to the GOP's insane base. I'm not sure. But Tulsi Gabbard, she saw that Ron DeSantis signed the Don't Say Gay Bill into law, and she thought, you know what, I could do one better. I actually think that that bill doesn't go far enough, because you know how it applies to grades K through 3? I think it should apply to uh, high schoolers as well. We should make it K through 12th grade. So uh, look at what she says in an effort to protect parental rights. And she's definitely authentic here. You know, she's not pandering at all. It's not like she was once homophobic and then apologized for said homophobia. But after seeing that the left saw through her bullshit, she's now turning to the right. This is all genuine. I'm sure she genuinely thinks these things. Take a look. You may have seen in the news recently or you may be a parent who's experienced how parental rights are under attack all across the country as the government tries to usurp parents' rights and responsibility to raise their own children. And we should all support the parental rights and education bill that recently passed in Florida, which very simply bans government and government schools from indoctrinating woke sexual values in our schools to a captive audience, a captive audience that is by law required to attend. But as I read the legislation, I got to tell you, I was shocked to learn that it only protects kids from kindergarten until third grade. Third grade? What about 12th grade? Or not at all? Now, government has no place in our personal lives. Government has no place in our bedrooms. Parents are the ones responsible for raising their kids and instilling in them a moral foundation, not the government. Now, the reality that we're facing in this country is our schools are failing. Nationally, 34% of students are below basic reading level in the fourth grade. 25% of high school graduates are functionally illiterate. Now, I'm confident that if our schools focused on educating our kids, teaching them the fundamentals, things like English, math, science, civics, history, we would see our literacy rates improve and set our young people up for success. They'll be thinking logically, thinking critically, and thinking for themselves. This is what our public schools should focus on. And apparently you can't focus on those things unless teachers pretend as if LGBTQ plus people don't exist. Except Tulsi, do you think that gay and trans students would be better or worse if teachers pretended as if that wasn't a thing, do you honestly think that that's going to put them in a better circumstance where they're more likely to excel at civics and math and history? A study from the California Healthy Kids Survey found that LGBTQ plus secondary students were at higher risk for bullying, chronic sadness, and thoughts of suicide, as well as poor learning engagement and academic performance compared to their straight and non-transgender peers. LGBTQ students also reported receiving substantially fewer social and developmental supports from teachers. But the study's analysis suggests that if LGBTQ students experienced the same levels of support and safety at school... As non-transgender and straight students, disparities would disappear or greatly diminish. So this study says that if we care about gay and trans students, we should provide them with support. Have counselors be able to talk to them about gender identity and sexual orientation. And that's how they'll excel. But Tulsi says, no, we shouldn't do that. But yet she cares about kids and wants them to learn. Mm -hmm. Sure, Tulsi, you're definitely not pandering to the right who you now want to be your base if you run for president again or launch some sort of a show or get a Fox News show. Uh, she also said that I was shocked to learn that it only protects kids, protects kids from kindergarten through third grade. Third grade, what about 12th grade? In 12th grade, I can assure you, we all know our sexual orientations or gender identity. Perhaps you're still confused a bit, but it becomes a lot more clearer when you're that age. But Tulsi Gabbard is saying, no, in 12th grade, when somebody is probably an adult at that time, a lot of 18 year olds are in 12th grade, when somebody is 17, 16, and they know about their gender identity and they're experiencing gender dysphoria, we should still pretend as if that doesn't exist so as to not indoctrinate them into this quote, woke ideology. And uh, the results would be catastrophic, Tulsi Gabbard. 
if we offer these students support, they excel. But if we don't do that, then what happens? Well, they harm themselves. There's a reason why LGBTQ plus students are at greater risk of self-harm and suicide. But Tulsi Gabbard is saying, I don't care. If we pretend as if gay people exist, then, uh, you know, if we mention that that's a thing, then these students might think, well, I want to be gay or trans. Therefore, we can't indoctrinate them. We should just let them kill themselves. What a terrible person. And I don't even know if she believes any of this, right? Who knows what Tulsi Gabbard believes? I don't think she has an ideology, but I do know that she has an agenda and she's just saying what she thinks will make her popular among the GOP's base. She also says parental rights are under attack. Now, she's actually right about that. Parental rights in America are under attack, especially in states like Texas. This article from the Washington Post reads, dreading the knock at the door, parents of trans kids in Texas are terrified for their families. Now, why are they terrified for their families, you ask? Well, because in Texas, if you are a loving parent who seeks out gender-affirming care for your child, which is medically necessary, by the way, this is what the experts say, well, you're a child abuser, and we're going to investigate you as if you're a child abuser. So, this is the state telling people how to raise their kids. They're saying you can't actually treat your trans child with gender-affirming care. You can't be loving and affirming to them. You have to treat them like shit. Otherwise, we're going to take your kid away from you, potentially. This is possibly going to lead to state-sanctioned kidnappings. And Tulsi Gabbard, somebody who's supposedly concerned about parental rights, said jack fucking shit about this. Has Tulsi Gabbard denounced what Texas is doing? Has Tulsi Gabbard said that parents on the opposite side of this argument should be allowed to raise their kids how they wish without getting indoctrinated into the, this right ideology? Of course not, because she's a hack. And she's just saying what the right wants to hear because she's a grifter. That's all she is. Uh, she says that the Don't Say Gay Bill bans schools from, quote, indoctrinating woke sexual values in our schools to a captive audience. This bill essentially forces teachers to pretend as if gay people and trans people don't exist because kids in grades K through three, they're not getting taught about uh, woke sexual values. They're not learning about that. So what this bill essentially does is it censors teachers. If you're a trans teacher or a gay teacher, you can't casually mention your partner. You can't casually mention anything about your life because you're indoctrinating students there, right? So you have to pretend as if gay people don't exist. If Shelby in the classroom has two mommies, you can't bring that up, you can't mention it, right? But it's okay for you to mention Tom's mommy and daddy because that's not indoctrinating them into heterosexuality, right? She also says parents are the ones responsible for raising their kids and instilling in them a moral foundation, not the government. Okay, well, if a parent doesn't like heterosexuality and they think, you know what? I don't like that heterosexuality is seen everywhere. It's in every cartoon. It's it's in public. Uh, I don't want my kid to be indoctrinated into this uh, heterosexual sexual ideology. So I don't want my kids to be taught about mommies and daddies. I want them to only know about their loving uh, mommy and mommy. So is that acceptable? No, what's only permissible is what the right wants. And they do believe in indoctrinating. And the reason why they don't want people to know about, or they don't want children to know about gay people is because, you know, if you don't teach kids to be accepting of other people, of trans people, of gay people at a young age, then perhaps, you know, you'll increase the likelihood that they'll be hateful. And they'll be a hateful bigot like Tulsi Gabbard when they grow up. So that's really what this is about. And in order to kind of push this bill, not Tulsi Gabbard, but others are uh, equating gay people with pedophiles. They're saying, oh, well, you know, if, you, if you're against this, then it seems like you want to teach kids about sex. Why? So you can groom them? Gross. Isn't that disgusting? No, no, that's not what this is about. Again, we're not teaching children about this and we shouldn't. There's age-appropriate conversations that you can have with children if they're curious about their classmates to daddies. But this bill is about censorship. And Tulsi Gabbard, uh, when she spoke at CPAC, her whole speech was essentially about freedom of speech. But now here she is coming out again in favor of censorship. I mean, she already proved to us that she's a fraud when it comes to free speech after voting against BDS, voting for APAC's resolution uh, to condemn BDS when she was a member of Congress. And here she is again, the free speech absolutist saying, actually, it's okay to censor teachers here and potentially subject them to a lawsuit if they say the wrong thing. What a fucking fraud. But I love it because Tulsi Gabbard, you know, she thought that she could come out and look as if she's the most homophobic, the most right wing. But Lauren Boebert actually outflanked her even because Lauren Boebert is saying, you know what? I think that, you know, 
12th grade, we should go further. We should protect kids until they're 21 and just treat, you know, sexual orientation and gender identity as we treat alcohol and tobacco. She tweeted out, we require people to be 21 to purchase alcohol beverages and 21 to purchase tobacco products. Why is it so unreasonable to require people to reach a certain level of maturity before making life altering decisions about their sexuality and identity? Now, it's interesting that she says this uh, because it suggests that people, you know, uh, you don't know your true sexual identity until you're 21. But hang on a second, Lauren Boebert, when you were 17 years old, you were sexually active. Your boyfriend at the time was 24 years old. Now, if we want to protect children, perhaps we should protect them from people like Lauren Boebert's husband, because um, let me remind you what he did in the 2000s when she was still with him, by the way. As Salon explains, in January 2004, when Jason Boebert was 24, he was arrested for exposing himself to two young women at a Colorado bowling alley. His future wife, Lauren Roberts, as she was then known, who was 17 at the time, was also present and was told she was no longer welcome at the bowling alley. So it seems like we don't have to protect children from gay and trans people. We should protect them from people like Lauren Boebert's husband. I've got to wonder, you know, um, he dated you when you were a minor. He was 24 and you were 17. Was he grooming you, Lauren Boebert? I mean, is all these straight people bringing up the presence of mommies and daddies because they want to groom young straight people into these relationships? I mean, it's absurd, right? I'm, I'm being facetious, obviously, but when you take their anti-gay argument and you apply it to straight people, it sounds absurd, right? But we have this double standard for gay people and trans people because, you know, the country is getting better, but there is still a lot of rampant homophobia and especially transphobia so you know these frauds like tulsi gabbard and lauren Boebert, they're going to try to engage in these culture war issues because they don't have real substantive critiques of society they don't want to talk about healthcare, education climate change so they keep us bogged down in this culture war you know they keep us fighting about issues that society has largely moved on from because this is what they think is going to win them support and, you know, they're probably right about that. I just hope that it doesn't work, but it probably is going to work. So the best that we can do is push back against them and let you know that this race to the bottom, this, you know, a attempt to be the most homophobic politician, you know, it might work now, but younger generations by and large are absolutely progressive and affirming of LGBTQ plus people. So it's only a matter of time when history is going to look back at you as terrible human beings so why do this all for temporary political wins it just seems stupid to me but um here we are